Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whenever you're watching this show. Welcome to the Topics of the Town News. I'm Mark Zuberek, and I have a, uh, a special guest today. We're doing a Beverly Municipal Airport slash relationship with Danvers, and we have Jason Roulet, one of the commissioners from the city of Beverly. I am going to introduce the show and then pretty much hand it over to Mr. Roulet because this is a, an opportunity for us to sort of exchange different uh, views. And I, you wanted to come on, and I gladly will have you. The agenda and opinions are solely by the topics of the town host, our guests, contributors, and commentators. So today I picked a quote, and I do this on a regular basis, and before we get into your uh, subject and your uh, identity, I would like to express this particular quote. Defeat is a state of mind no one is ever defeated until defeat has been accepted as a reality. And this relates to our subject that we're going to be talking about today, but to me, defeat in anything is merely temporary, and its punishment is but an urge for me to greater effort to achieve my goals. Now, that statement is all-encompassing of what's been going on between the communities and the government of Beverly Airport and its regional, municipal, whatever you want to call it. But to continue this quote, I have added one more item, and these are quotes that I receive on a regular basis. Always be yourself. Express yourself, have faith in yourself, do not go out and look for an alternative successful personality because you will only find yourself. Believe in yourself. So this is my motto that has been with me for the last 50 years, going with the government of Danvers and local, uh, state, government, and with the airport. So, I was asked by Jason Roulet. He's a Be Beverly Airport commissioner to come and discuss our mutual concerns related to the operation, development, expansion, and the associated environmental and social impacts to our and surrounding communities. So I was asked by Jason to sort of, who are we? What are we? And I put my little blurb together, but I did mine with little bullets mm. because I think that's more expressive. And my audience pretty much knows who I am, what I am, and what I do. But let me just give you a little rundown, and you've read this, mm -hmm. but I just want to get that on the air. I was Polish-born, legal immigrant to the United States back in 1962. Mm -hmm. Long time ago. 50-year <laughs> community resident, activist, and participant. Graduate engineer, Northeastern University, civil structural engineer, nuclear plant facilities. That's primarily what I was working on. National and international construction project manager on utility and industrial projects. Participant in Danvers government for 40 years now. And I got roped into being a finance committee member by one of the fathers 
who was of a select person in town who was at that time Frank Mills. He was the moderator at that time, and he said, you're going to the Finance Committee. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but Danvers government for 40 years, Danvers Finance Committee chairman for 10 years, Danvers Selectman six years, elected in 95 and uh, booted out in 2001. But this happens. Returned to Danvers Town Meeting, participated in development of public access broadcasting and public programs, public access TV. And we're going to get into your background because you have a heck of a lot more background in community uh, public access or filmmaking than I do. Program director and host of Topics of the Town News, other programming for 25 years, active participant in conservative issues in Danvers, identified as a government watchdog. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that's something, I just put that in. (laughs) Always represented and outspoken on resident issues and always defended the First Amendment rights because I think this is an opportunity for us to express our views. Whether anybody watches the show, it's irrelevant, but we have an opportunity to put our words in action. Currently committed to the defense of resident issues related to the expansion of government and of the Beverly Airport. So it's a dual effort. Airport expansion and the environmental issues are not new. These governing issues have constantly been evident during my 50 years in the activism for governing issues. Resident must be considered. They pay taxes and support our establishments, our institutions. And Beverly Airport is an institution. We'll get to that later. Now, let's get to know Jason Roulet. Well, Mark, thank you so much for the introduction, for having me on your show. Um, and I'm a little rusty, so I'll ha- you'll have to show me which camera to look at. <clears throat> My apologies. Um, and I got to say, Mark, I it was a delight to look at your resume. Uh, you have a distinguished career. Um, I, uh, I just love the fact that... Uh, you know, when you came to America, you hit the ground running, and you have been um, dedicated uh, not only to, obviously, your professional career. Uh, and I, I do want to ask you how you feel about nuclear energy and if you think that's— I a, love it. I was wondering that because there's a, a lot of talk out there about nuclear is actually being one of the cleanest— This is our savior right now, and right. Seabrook is a yeah. plant that's supplying electricity to our region. Yeah. And I hope they last for another 60 years. And it's, it's, it's because we're, we will be talking about sustainability. Right. And I think, you know, we have to look outside the box. I know it was demonized in the 80s and 90s. We know why. There was also a few accidents that are, you know, kind of well known. But when you look at, you know, um, th- there's not a large carbon footprint with, with nuclear. And then the, the possibility of, I mean, I've heard recently that they're talking about making smaller nuclear reactors that are almost self-sustaining, so there's less likelihood of, well, number one, when you build a large facility, it's like, what, 10 years, uh, billions of dollars? $17 billion yeah. now. Well, there you go, right? It's, it's incredibly um, expensive, and it's incredibly complicated. There are many layers of systems and safeguards you have to put in place, but with a smaller, uh, smaller facilities, it seems like you're uh, kind of reducing some of the risk. Uh, but anyway, it's exci- I'm, I'm excited to uh, think, you know, in, in, in new directions, you know, rethinking things, um, because, um, you know, that's where we sometimes find, our, find some of our breakthroughs, um, which is somewhat uh, related to, you know, kind of our conversation today I, that we're going to have is it's about looking at things a little differently and finding, you know, those breakthroughs that we didn't expect. Um, but I, I also have to comment on that introduction. I liked it. When I first read it, I, saw, I thought, where did those quotes come from? Because I saw two things in there. 
One was of resilience, and one was this really touching, uh, encouraging um, thing of like faith, faith in yourself, belief in yourself. And uh, I can see how those two quotes really, um, really do speak to the advocacy you've done in your lifetime. I'm really, one thing I hope we can uh, kind of touch on a little bit is I want to know a little bit more about that in your life. Where did that come from? Not everybody has that passion. Well, the the, the thing right now, if I may, Absolutely. I'm going to interrupt. Uh, go ahead. That. You know, yeah. I go think right what ahead. we want to do is we want, we want to find out a heck of a lot more about you. <laughs> and this is uh, an expression of the show, we want mm -hmm. to introduce you to our community mm -hmm. because you are responsible for directing and uh, the operations and maintenance of the airport, but you also have to consider the public relations that mm -hmm. is happening. And that's why I thought your presentation here, I, I think that's great because <laughs> I love the uh, issues that you presented. So if you, if you sure. could, just give us a brief outline of what you think. I, I don't want you to go back to Poland or anything, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> you can go back to uh, where? Uh, Washington? Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's so... I, like I say, I only referenced your uh, CV because I found resonance in it. I related to it. The Good. things you spelled out, you know, we may have, we may see things differently. Uh, we may be on a different side of the fence in this context. But at the heart, you know, I share your passion for advocacy uh, for those who maybe don't have the voice, don't have the means. Uh, and, and then there's just the reality of government. Uh, it has to do a lot of stuff, and it takes a long time to do all that stuff. And sometimes things get missed, and it needs to be brought to other people's right. attention, right. right? And what I also appreciate are whistleblowers, whole accountability. So when I, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but uh, one of the four things, I, you could say I had four planks in my platform in uh, assuming the role of, of commissioner and uh, of one of the many commissioners. Uh, of whom I'm not the most talented, believe me. There's so many amazing commissioners we have, but I, I really, first and foremost, believe in accountability. You know, we, we, have, we owe it to the public to be accountable. Um, transparency is so important. You know, the public needs to know what goes on behind the curtains. You know, what is government doing on our behalf, and are they doing it the right way or the way, you know, we expected when we uh, voted that the, the party or, or candidate in. Communication is also tied into that. You have to be able to share your progress um, and keep people in, um, in uh, touch with what's going on so they know if they need to respond or, you know, that's also a function of the accountability and transparency. And the fourth one uh, I thought was important was innovation, right? That's where I feel we can get our breakthroughs and we can reinvent things. Because to your, to your point, Mark, and I agree with you, we get stuck. We get stuck. In and, a rut. In a rut. That's right. We do. I need to be reminded all the time. Uh, I forget things because you know, we all get busy. We all have our, our lives. But, you know, some of it, when we assume a role, we also have our responsibilities of the office. And I, I personally take that very seriously. I know we all did who, uh, you know, uh, had to go through an oath, and um, and as we were accepted into this uh, policy, uh, uh, this uh, this body that that defines policy, for the airport, and um, and so one of the things that intrigued me about the possibility of being on the airport. I'm not a pilot, by the way. I always wanted to be, and maybe someday someday I will once my kids get through college. And I'll, I'll give you a little insight of my pilot existence. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was in Linden, New Jersey, mm -hmm. as a co-op from Northeastern working on Chicago Bridge and Iron Tanks, mm -hmm. fuel oil storage tanks. Mm -hmm. And I lived in a, um, in a housing, um, it was a, a couple of rooms over a gin mill. <laughs> <laughs> at, across from the airport at Linden, at Linden, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And my first and only flight that I took on a 
little puddle jumper, <laughs> is fr- in London, New Jersey, as a um, invitation to go and try out the uh, pilot uh, program at oh, the wow. airport. Mm-hmm. I was probably 20 years old, uh-huh. and I was all alone out there, and I had a Sunday. I had no vehicle, uh-huh. so I, I went across the street to the air, airfield, and the guy took me out, and we went out for about an hour. Really? Just to experience mm-hmm. the flight. And he says, here's, here's the wheel. I said, oh, no, <laughs> you fly. I'm here. <laughs> so I haven't gone up in a ne- little... Uh, ever since? Is ever it, since, really? no. And yeah. this was back in 77, 76. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I appreciate the the, the airport, mm-hmm. the capacity to learn at the airport. However, there has to be peaceful coexistence. Mm. And you've mm. heard me say that I have. so often. It's, it resonates in my mind. Even when I fall asleep, I still oh sometimes my God. hear that. that. <laughs> We're going to have to change this. <laughs> no, look, I agree. Uh, coexistence, I might frame it as partnership because that's right. a little more active, right? That's where I hope this goes. Um, and it's great that you, you gave it a shot. See, that's what I admire about you, Mark. You know, you, you're, you don't just, you're not just st- sitting here uh, criticizing something you've never experienced before. And I, I know you're not criticizing aviation, but, I, but I'm just saying, uh, you, you take a risk. You go out there and you do things. You get things done. And, and look, what, you're, what you've done in the, in the past in your, in your government career and what you're doing now as an advocate on behalf of the neighborhood, on Danvers and the people, that's a risk. You're going to get a lot of blowback. You're going to get a lot of heat. Uh, oh, yes. People are going to say unkind things about you. Believe me. It's, but it's, it's, a, it's a sacrifice. And that's why I, was, that's why I said first out, I'm, I'm really curious why that's so important to you. There's an origin story there somewhere. Whenever you want to share that with me, I'd be eager to hear it. The thing is that if I may just redirect this thing a little bit, Absolutely. because I think what, what I want to do is I want to learn about you sure. and sure. the audience to learn, why are you here? <laughs> I mean, this is, uh, you know, I, yeah. I give the opportunity to anyone that wants to come mm-hmm. on, and, and I love it when I have a guest, yeah. because it gives the audience a different perspective, mm. because I can preach for hours. Yep. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. But I, what I have here is just a guest producer is interesting point to me and, and your resume. In 2010, I co-created, produced, directed, starred in, mm-hmm. and composed the score of my first short film with my former theater company yeah. that went on to receive a premiere at the 2011 Nantucket Film Festival. Yeah. So I, I think that's something that's important because you are pretty much uh, much more engaged in this business of communications mm-hmm. because we're both in that same thing. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the thing is we need to apply what yeah. we have learned in the past, mm-hmm. what we're interested in, Mm-hmm. And you have expressed yeah. your interest. So I, yeah. I think that's the more important mm. part of what we're talking about yeah. because I'm a known entity. <laughs> so what I, what I like to do is get to know you yeah. mm-hmm. and what are you... See, uh, I'm going into why are, we inter- why are you interested in the Beverly Airport? How were you appointed? Mm. That's the mm-hmm. important piece that sure. I, I would like to get to. Yeah, and uh, we'll do that. Um, um, it's funny you mentioned, <clears throat> you know, film and uh, and, and, and um, a platform like this. Uh, you know, we, we have a common interest in storytelling, right? Narratives, right? Narratives are so critical to us as human beings. I mean, it's it's reflected in our religious texts. It's reflected in um, the stories we tell ourselves to give us a sense of meaning and purpose. Right. And that's always fascinated me uh, because I have been through lots of experiences where I've seen suffering. And it's really hard to watch that 
it's it's hard to see someone who is in pain and doesn't have the ability to or can't find a way to do anything about that. And I find that sometimes that's that reticence or that paralysis is um, is in the quicksand of a lack of belief in yourself or awareness that some things could be different, which is why I was moved by your quote. That's why I'm here. And that's why I'm, you know, I decided to, you know, be on the commission. I was invited by a friend uh, I, because of my interest in aviation. But I also have a background where so one of the earliest jobs I worked at was at the Small Business Development Center in Coos Bay. It was, I, was, I started when I was 17. And I didn't know what I was getting into. I just thought, well, maybe I want to go into business. That was before I became a pre-med. And, uh, and other things. I'm a dilettante. Uh, and, um, and so when I did that, it also happened to be in conjunction with uh, my hometown losing the primary industry. It's, it was timber industry and fishing industry, you know, two extractive industries. And they'd logged all the logs off, and the mills were looking to uh, – all the big mills were closing down. And that would – they employed about – I mean, probably 75% of the people in the town were right. employed by the timber industry or ancillary industries. It was devastating. Those were family wage jobs. You could have one job there and you could support a full family. They're gone. And there's nothing to take its place. This sounds similar to what's happened in Millinocket, Maine. Mm. Millinocket, Maine. I, I worked at the paper mm. mills over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was devastated. It's all yeah. bought out by China now. Yeah, it, and it was, it was so painful to watch. It is. And you know what really got me, though? It's like, so that happened. And I was, you know, young. And I, I, I had a lot of uh, hope. I was bristling with hope. And I wanted my, my, uh, peop, my towns, uh, my, the, the people in the town, I wanted my, my uh, fellow townspeople to, I want to share that hope with them, to say it's not over. Let's look at this problem. Let's reimagine what we can do with this deep water port. Uh, let's think of another industry. Let's reach out. Let's, let's work with other people. And what I found so difficult was no one could get beyond, we have no work. Right. And they couldn't get outside of that, that trap, that mindset. It was really frustrating. But so I, was, I had the privilege of um, working in these little projects, these little economic development projects that were sometimes uh, county funded, sometimes state funded, and, and occasionally federally funded. And they put me in jobs that were way over my head. And that's where I learned that you don't have to know what you're doing when you start doing something. You can figure it out, especially when necessity dictates it. And so that uh, was kind of where I got my start. And it was partly the fuel of, of looking around at neighbors and family and caring about them and, and my community. I, I, I didn't want to see the deterioration of the, the communal fabric, the thing that makes you feel safe when you go home, when you, you know you can go out of the park and, with your children and, and you can go, get a, go to the store because you have enough money to buy food. You know, that was slowly being in a way. Well, see, this is an opportunity for you to step in and have the empathy for the residents yeah. that are being impacted by the noise, yeah. the fumes, mm -hmm. the air emissions, yeah. and the expansion that's going on at the airport. And that's my plug. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know what, Mark, interesting, interesting segue, because that's kind of what I was a was appealing to me about right. the situation because I did see two things like I saw my hometown I saw number one um, uh, as you said you know there were issues and there was conflict right. and that I was attracted to that not in a strange sort of way you know what I mean but it's like it spoke to me my a heart challenge yeah it's, exactly I love the impossible I'm attracted to it like a moth to a flame it can be a problem sometimes but, you know, but like you, you, <laughs> you got, get burned. You, you do. You, but you, you got on that airplane, right? You right. know, we overcome our um, reticence because the, the passion, the, the mission is, is greater than our fear. And that's what, you know, provoked me. The other side of it, there's, a, there's a, the other side of this coin, right? That's opportunity. So in my hometown, one of the things I was concerned with was when we did talk about opportunity, people were throwing things out like, well, what if we had a, a nuclear waste site here you know that would that would bring in some jobs it's like 
Well, yes and no. <laughs> that brings in other problems. But I was really like saddened and, uh, and worried that these are the kinds of opportunities we're going to now look for because there's a, a void we're trying to fill. So, Mark, this comes back to what we're talking about today is that I want to get beyond removing a problem before we have a vision, something we want to put in that vacancy before it's a vacancy. You know what I mean? It's, it's coming up with a it, – it's, so it's both, right? It's both – I have – so, yeah, that's, that's what was interesting to me about the Airport Commission because, again, those, those four planks, that one on the end there was about that vision, right? Innovation. I said, you know, the airport's a little gem. It just needs a little cutting, a little polishing. But we can't do that in a vacuum. We, we have a, all these stakeholders that are affected by it, and they need to be at the table. The stakeholders that are being, and excuse my expression, okay. ignored okay. Yeah. are the residents of Beverly, Danvers, mm -hmm. Wenham, Topsfield, and the surrounding communities mm -hmm. because they're all getting impacted. The problem, and, and, and I hate to divert this thing, but the problem is, is that the airport commission right now is brand new. Mm -hmm. Within a year, they've changed. The old establishment is gone, and the mayor has the, his own troops in there now. Danvers is getting a new member again because we have uh, one that's resigning. So we're going to... Okay, should, should we have a... a, a Chiron says breaking news? No. Okay. It's not breaking news. This <laughs> is old news. <laughs> this has been something yeah. that's been brewing for nine months. Hmm. And the thing is that we as Danvers residents, mm -hmm. and I'll speak for myself, mm -hmm need a clear definition of how big the airport is going to get. Mm. And it all depends on the airport commission because mm. you guys are the ones, and ladies mm. now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's just a full disclosure, my daughter is on <laughs> the airport commission, so there's a Zuberek on there. And she's great, and I really appreciate well, her she, contributions. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. I, I appreciate it too. But, yeah. but uh, she has an understanding. I do my thing. She mm -hmm. does her thing. That's very professional. So the thing that we need to really discuss is mm -hmm. what is the mission of the airport commission and and i need to find out from you what is your understanding because um i have some notes here that mm -hmm. you've put together and i i really like them yeah but i i like to get into more detail on sure. that but first yeah. let's get what is your understanding you've been appointed to mm -hmm. the commission yeah what is your role well, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, so I, I, you know, the, the, each of the commissioners that have come in, I've been darn impressed with. And I'm, and I just say that because it really, it's been a thrill to work with some of these folks. I've learned so much from them. They're so much more accomplished than I am in certainly in aviation. And I, I, uh, and I, I say what a great team, but you know, it, there's a, a, there's a learning curve when you first arrive. And there's not necessarily a playbook for you to just, you know, pick up and read. And so that's, on one hand, kind of good because you have some latitude to kind of redefine how you feel it should be done. In, of course, in conjunction with, you know, um, you know, all the laws, regulations, and, and uh, advice from uh, the solicitor's office, obviously. Um, but you, you kind of find... I've had my experience with yeah. the solicitor's office. <laughs> yeah, love them. Great. I know. <laughs> we appreciate the solicitor's office. Uh, they, keep us, they keep us honest. Um, so, uh, but, um, and so in that role, so there's, there's the, the... So when, as the commissioner, you know, we weren't a full complement when I started. And so we've been, you know, the, the mayor's been, you know, progressively appointing them. And, I, and some of his appointments are like, wow, that's like... That's impressed. That was a really great appointment. I was really impressed by, uh, again, uh, the the people he he selected, uh, and it's it, and it's been 
partly we're trying to figure out what we need to do to get you know kind of up and running especially after the period of the pandemic which kind of threw everything in a bit of i don't know a little bit of chaos it did for everybody and um so there's that we also had to appoint a new manager because we'd had a, an interim manager but you know they're just keeping the ship running you know the, the new manager we needed to set a course with uh, so there's all this housekeeping we had to do in the beginning. So a lot of those months were eaten up with that in making sure we're, you know, we got to figure out, uh, get everybody on board, figure out what's priority and focus on everything from, you know, prioritizing security, and, well, safety and security and on down the line and, and compliance with the FAA regulations and so forth. And just sorting out once we have everything in place, how do we get things funded and the, the labyrinthine kind of funding mechanisms through you know federal and state agencies a lot to learn and for me i've never been in this this particular role before and and within the commonwealth of massachusetts but as so i'm sitting there thinking well at some point it's like well we probably need to form subcommittees to tackle some of these problems because there's a lot of issues that can kind of get lost you know we, we have to jump in uh, once a month and figure out everything and and then a lot of time passes, and you and so when you can kind of organize some of these problems under the the, the hospices of a um, of a subcommittee, then you can have kind of a group of people kind of focused on that issue and, de and develop that into a solution. You are in effect doing some of that yeah. currently, indeed, and that has proven to be very effective, at least bringing the issues up. Yeah, and uh, the innovation is yes. tremendous i'm so and yeah but there, there's a lot of other things mm -hmm. that are related to the customer relations yes. which we are the customers yeah absolutely and absolutely. you have to remember that because yes. we are the taxpayers and yep. those are the people that pay not your bill but the <laughs> airport bill. Still waiting for you my serve, check. <laughs> you serve gratis. I do. I do. Yes. And that, that is it's important. A lot of us get involved in this as volunteers. Now, let me, let me just okay. read one little paragraph. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm looking at your write-up, and I'm glad you did this because this is very informative. I'm glad you found it useful. And I find it that we need to explore this further mm -hmm. because there's a lot of information that nobody knows yeah. about you. Why are you there? I mean, even at the commissioners' meetings, I was very surprised that the new commission mm -hmm. didn't even introduce the members as they were coming on board. Mm. They didn't give a resume of the individual. Now, the backgrounds of each individual are tremendous, yeah. but they have to be dug up by individuals mm -hmm. on the internet or mm -hmm. someplace else. They should be addressed at every, or at the meeting when they're introduced. But I may not bring the extraordinary expertise my colleagues bring to aviation, or experience in government. However, I do bring with me a keen ear mm -hmm. to, deep, uh, to listen deeply, mm -hmm. a respect for people, speak, to the voice, uh, speak for the voiceless, and a desire to build bridges and collaborate be however I can. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you've read my whole outline, but mm -hmm. I even identified, I am thinking that I would like to discuss the following. Okay. But why don't we just continue with that sure. statement because that's the important piece yeah. because that's the personal commitment yeah. to what you want to accomplish, mm -hmm. whether we like it or not, but that's mm -hmm. what you're, you know, yeah. you're going after. It is. Look, you, you hit on it, right? It's like, what is my specialty? I look at everyone else, like uh, Chris Kendrick, who's the uh, chair of the Innovation Subcommittee. Uh, he's got an amazing background. He has connections to the FAA. He has, uh, he's on the cutting edge of technology. He's thrilled and excited to bring um, innovation, especially in the form of you know, um, uh, sustainability, 
which will benefit the community and benefit the airport too. But then I say, and I, so I step back and I have an interest, that's why I'm on the subcommittee. And, uh, and we have some, um, uh, uh, you know, some real, uh, some keen interest in, in what we can do with that. But I, as I step back, I say, you know, I kind of in, uh, mentally think of myself as like commissioner at large. Right, I, I'm sort of big picture looking for uh, those things that get missed and and escalating them where necessary. So this is one of the one of the things I've been sitting around, actively trying to think how can we. This is a problem for me. I'm bothered by the fact that we still have some residue left over from uh, uh, the, the the relationship or, or damaged relationship between you know the the towns and particularly Danvers and and the commission. And and I want to build the bridge. And I want to uh, provide acts of goodwill. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, when you're in a relationship and someone hurts you, you're offended, and they say, oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And they go ahead and they do the same thing. Or they don't, you know, whatever, uh, just speaking very generally. At that point, you kind of need uh, uh, evidence that someone's heart has changed, that things are different, right? In this instance, we have a new commission and a new airport manager. And as you, as you noted, like we're still figuring things out. We've missed simple you know, social etiquette like introducing everyone with a, but you know, also a function of that is time and, and trying to respect everybody's time who comes to the meeting. And maybe we need a separate meeting. You know, maybe we did, need just a, a get to know you meeting and that might you're, be useful. You're, you're conducting a business meeting. Yeah. You're not conducting a customer or right. um, resident information yes. meeting. Absolutely. But the, the, the issues that I see, and, and yep. let me just bring Go ahead. this up, and I'll Go bet ahead. you you're right on the same page yep. here. Yep. The issue is, is that you're looking for something that you can produce mm -hmm. to appease the neighbors, uh, uh, the, uh, the residents. An act of good faith to demonstrate the direction we're going in. In other words, you've heard a lot of good words probably for many years and oh, yeah. seen little delivered. I would rather show up with some deliveries and then we talk about what we do together next. That's my hope. You know, that's, that's for me, um, I, in my mind, I feel like I, I want to devote uh, some of my attention now to some of the issues you've raised Particularly, again, with respect to building bridges, to, to connecting more with the community and having a two-way communication, respectful two-way communication, because it's because what happens, look, another aspect, this is a human part, right? Like, um, when we, there's a lot of, when I went to some of those early meetings, there's a lot of heat there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there still is. There still is. Right. But look, where does that heat come from? The heat comes from, there's a source, there's a reason why people are angry. And sometimes people raise their voice because they haven't been heard. Right. So they physically feel, i got to yell. I understand that. I've been there. And I don't get offended when people yell at me. You know, first, like, I go in there, it's like, why are people yelling at me? I didn't do anything. I didn't do this. But, but you know what? I am here. And so I'm responsible. I'm partly responsible right. for fixing what, whoever, who did it doesn't matter, but the fact that it needs to change and we need to do something about it, that's during my watch, and the buck stops here. Well, let me, let me just throw this out, okay. because I, this is all in the outline. I mean, yeah. I hope if you read I it, read you, every you know single where word. you're going. <laughs> Room word. for improvement, yeah. beginning an mm -hmm. open and constructive dialogue with mm -hmm. Danvers yeah. and learning to listen more deeply to mm -hmm. the concerns of the airport's neighbors. Yeah. Partnership. Mm -hmm. How do we work together to create a better future for all? Mm -hmm. That is just a start mm -hmm. of what we're at. Yeah. But I've also included a recommendation of mm -hmm. actions that the airport commission can take place mm -hmm. and these actions have been submitted as mm -hmm. public comment mm -hmm. to the airport commission at public meetings no action has taken place and i uh, know that you're going to go back to uh the airport uh uh, noise abatement and all that, that's, that's irrelevant right now. Now we're getting into the impact of the expansion that has been promised by the consultants in your master plan 
that I don't know if you guys have read that master plan because I even asked for a hard copy mm -hmm. from the airport manager. Mm -hmm. It cost me 20 bucks because I needed to pay them for making copies, but it's on the internet. I know yeah. that, but I want that copy available. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that there's never any give from the airport commission. It's always the take. And that's, that's where the, the, the rec reconsider the re relocate the le uh, and relocate the lease mm -hmm. for the airport land flight level aviation. That was my first item in the last meeting. Mm -hmm. The rest of them were all environmental. Yeah. And nobody's even considering those. I get shut down at the meeting because I talk too much. And I do. <laughs> but the problem is, is that somebody has to are, express these views. Are you talking are you, too much because you're not being heard? Absolutely. Right. I'm being ignored. Right. And well, the, the public comment is a waste of time. Well, so, uh, and I, I would like to reframe that a little bit. As you know, I'm going to, right? You know, I have to. Uh, not just because I, what I mean is like, I, 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 I just, you know, I want to respect what you feel. And, right. I, and I, I, I recognize that. That's what you feel. And I'm sorry that you feel that way. And again, I know what it feels like. But um, one, where I see, so what I'm trying to do is when I go through all these, when I did, I, go through, I went through all those points. And really, I'm, I'm still sitting with them, to be honest, because I'm trying to figure out solutions, right? Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to go forward, how to work, and how to, to, to do this together. Because so some of the problem is that communication where we're, we're still working on communication there are a lot of things we're still ramping up because we you know we've been dealing with a lot of stuff uh, and now we're kind of turning the corner and it's you know it's getting good now so now we need we're going to be working on better communication and 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 tracking uh, these kinds of things so that we can report back we, we do talk about these things we do address them in subcommittees uh, they're not forgotten, and they do. And, and if I do bring these up, I know other commissioners bring them up too. But we're not communicating those necessarily during uh, our meetings all the time. And I think having another. So one of the other <coughs> things I want to, you know, we're starting to talk about is having, um, you know, uh, more avenues of communication so people can they understand it, what's going on. The avenues of communication are supposed to be <clears throat> during and maybe even after the meetings that you mm -hmm. have because those are public meetings mm -hmm. and they are regulated by the state uh, mm -hmm. you know, of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. That's how they have to be conducted. You're not supposed to be making decisions Oh yeah, no, not at all. Before or after the nope. meeting, That's, because yeah. you can get into a lot oh, of trouble. Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, which again is one of the reasons why it takes longer to get anything done, because we have to uh, respect the OML uh, uh, open meeting laws. So I can't just like run out and grab a bunch of people and say, like, "Oh, let's let's do it like the the." Um, I know. can. Well, I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I should have you working for me because maybe you no, can help no, me I, figure this I, stuff. <laughs> I don't work for anyone anymore. Oh, I know you don't work for anybody. <laughs> yeah, you're. But no, so um, that's that's a limit. So that we talk about like, so when when I was sworn in, I I, I had I had my big vision. I was like, oh, you know, we're gonna. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I want to do you know get uh, you know uh, unleaded AV gas and and uh, EV charging, and we want to bring in electric aircraft, which we're all working on, by the way. Which is fine. Yeah. That's perfect. That's what we're working on. We're literally working on that right now. But the thing that, so the, select, uh, the, um, the city councilor came up to me afterwards and he said, you know what, what you said was, that was great. I love it. That's wonderful. But I want you to know something. Hold on to that feeling right now because you're going to lose it. Because government right. works incredibly slowly. You're going to get lots of headwind, lots of resistance, and you want to give up. Well, you're going to want to give up. He said, don't. It's just understand it's going to take a really long time. And he was right. And it did happen that way. And but that's by design. But that's by design, because right? Because what they want you to do is get tired. Well, you know, tired of asking. I was going to say. Yeah, tired of Okay, okay. Frustrated. Yeah, sure, you could say that. But I, I, I don't, I'm trying not to look at it cynically. I look at it as like, you know, so there are checks and balances, and you have to go through a lot of hoops to make sure that everything's done above board and according to the laws and regulations. And, and, and so the public is aware of what government is doing on their behalf. So we can do a better job of 
communication, and that's something I want to work on. Oh, here's another example of like with the subcommittee, the innovation subcommittee. I want to, I want to tackle some new problems, and some of those problems I want to tackle are the very things we're talking about of mitigating some of the impacts of noise and pollution on the abutting. The key thing is expansion right now, and you know that. Well, so that's that, something. The problem um, is, is that mm-hmm. we do a lot of talking, but no action. There's been no response to the questions raised during public comment in regard to the expansion. And the first indicator of the expansion that's happening is a 300 foot long, 135 feet wide, 45 feet high hangar that's going to be impacting the residents on Old Burley Street. The thing is that that hangar does not have to be on that side. It's only being built because of the operations manager that's there uh, running the airport is located at that location. Why not put it on the other side of the runway? That has been suggested several times but the thing is that we have a lot of talking, but no action. Because so, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt because you, Mark. They, that's all right. I've been interrupted <laughs> much, much more than yeah. you have. Well, Mark, I, I don't want to speak specifically on that right now. But what I do want to speak uh, on is regarding development. We're talking about the master plan. Mm-hmm. That's hitting its uh, shelf date, its sell-by date, uh, really quick now. We're going to be pivoting to a new master plan, uh, if we're going to be developing a new one, which, by the way, again, one of my, one of the things I want to have in as part of that process is the engagement of all of the stakeholders to help us come up with that vision of what that's going to look like, right? And, and I want to, and I'm probably going to be sitting at some point in the near future talking to you, but how can we do that? What's the best way to accomplish that? Because right. I don't want to miss that input, and I want that to be in there. Because remember what I was talking about? You know, it's true of a country that is uh, gets rid of its despot or dictator by conflict. Oh, we have a dictator? I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't speaking about... I, in the past, <laughs> when there have been dictators that have been deposed, Right, and there's a vacuum of power. Often, what happens is someone worse comes in. I know, right? And I saw this with my hometown. I'm not talking about individuals, but I'm talking about in the industry's gone. No ideas. Something worse comes in, like a, a nuclear waste dump. But so what? No, what, you're not going to get one of those okay, no, because the government doesn't want to spend the money on yeah. it. They already have a salt mine in Utah. Oh, great! That's great. That's so I'm not worried about that now. <laughs> But um, <laughs> but what I am what I what I realize is like it's this coming up with a vision, right? right? And instead of you know and, and so I know you want to be able to put the past behind us, but first we have to resolve a few things. I get that, and I want to help with that. But uh, I want us to start looking about what solutions can we come up with to uh, put in there. Uh, so that we all have something to work towards, something positive to work towards. The so first thing I would suggest, mm-hmm. if I may, sure, I, I always do. A- anyway, absolutely, <laughs> is that we need to abandon the current selection of option two that has been selected for extending the runways, mm-hmm. because that's an indicator, and that's what has been driving the residents and the North Shore communities, Mm -hmm. because that's just inviting jet traffic. And you've heard the statement that we do not want to become a jet port, Mm -hmm. but we are becoming a jet port. Already right right now, we have at least four that are coming in and out of Mm -hmm. uh, Beverly. And the thing is, they belong in Hanscom, or they mm-hmm. belong at Logan. Mm-hmm. And the only reason they're being invited is because we want more business. And, and I understand that, but yeah. the community cannot handle the jets. It sounds like we need to have a more deliberate and thorough conversation about this. Yes, we can. We, I think we do. And as a start, because I'm already thinking of, like, we have, you know, everything has to kind of have a a use case or a business case. And, and um, 
there's there's such a thing as you know reasonable growth, which is an expectation around let's say if you have an airport, you, know, you want reasonable growth, but then you don't also want something that's going to adversely impact the community or neighbors. So that's why you need community input to say, hey, do we need to put the brakes on this and reevaluate? Is this really good for us or is it not? So here's a letter. I read that. that. I've sent. I read that. every single I've word of that. I've sent that yeah. to our congressman because yeah. that's where I thought the FAA issues mm -hmm. are really related to the federal government, mm -hmm. and federal government is holding the purse strings, and we as taxpayers are supporting them. Mm -hmm. So. I've, uh, there's a whole bunch of attachments that are missing because mm -hmm. I submitted that to our airport manager mm -hmm. and he somehow lost all the attachments. But I have them on the computer. Okay. Well, and, um, you know, so, uh, like I say, it's impo I, feel, I feel it's very important because um, I knew, from, I, so when, when I first got, came on the commission, one of the things I really was... Um, interested in is what is our vision like i really felt we were starting over again and that's why i say we have a window of opportunity i want i want you guys and i say you guys us guys you know uh us people uh danvers beverly when all the surrounding community just look at this as an opportunity we have some amazing commissioners with incredible backgrounds leverage that for but your let's, benefit let's make them make some decisions that support the complaints that are coming through. Yeah, and and so just and just to as a rejoinder to that, Mark, I just want to say that uh, we have a, um, a, a a group of stakeholders, a constituency of stakeholders, that as a commissioner we have to to take in balance of each other. Which means that yes, the community has to have an equal, a proportionally equal part of that in terms of informing that. I don't know, or maybe think, in this personal opinion, I don't think that's been done well in the past right and that's what i really want to focus on correcting that's what this is bridge building is about because this is the first step but there's a lot more work ahead of us but the th the thing that you have to realize mm -hmm. is that there's a hundred years of history behind this airport oh i know yeah and the thing yeah. is it developed out of military use yep. and uh, the mm -hmm. world war ii use or oh, even predating that it was like uh, tw in the 1928 was that uh, yeah, I, a club I, I, yeah I, I read that it's all in that. there yeah and it was was it paved in 42 or 45 45 i 45. think 45 I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The thing is, it got paved. Yeah. And that pavement has been replaced. Now we're talking about a master plan that wants to reduce the pavement. They just did it, mm. I think, 10 years ago. There's 100 feet wide, mm -hmm. but it's 5,001 feet long. Now we want to add another 300 feet on each end to make it accessible to larger, heavier, and noisier jets. But that's my point, and I stick sure. to it. Sure, that's fair. That's the fair. thing is that I, I have one question <laughs> for you, and, I, okay. and I'm going to ask I this. do have a counterpoint to that, but I'm not going to raise that right now. We'll, uh, we'll have a second, a second opportunity to that. Maybe. Well, maybe. I don't well, know. Well, we'll see how this goes, I don't know if goes, I right? want to expose this <laughs> show, to, <laughs> but I think it's a good yeah. conversation that yeah. we've had. I have a question. Sure. Nota bene. Okay. Is that a production term or a I, uh, opera a, a term? Co a colleague, my, my colleague at LexisNexis, who has uh, worked on the space shuttle uh, heat shields, and he was, he's my— Because that's together. Italian. Uh, yeah, so it's just a, it's a good note. You know, he, he'd always use nota bene at all of his—he so he was French, and he's like— Fine. He's like, Good note, good note, yeah. Well, th there you go. That, that I was wondering whether that came back to your cultural development mm -hmm. in the production of film and, uh, you know, shows corporate. and things corporate. like that. Corporate. Came from the corporate world, yeah. Well, it's a new term I learned. Yeah, yeah. See? So we learn from each other. That's, I'm glad yeah. you, you're, you know, you're here. But I, what I want to stress, and I want to thank you. Well, we have five minutes. That's great. Yeah. Uh, we have finally realized who Jason is. And you are one of the eight commissioners on there now because mm -hmm. it's not a full board. Mm -hmm. 
So you are waiting one more. But one of the things that I noted on the website Mm -hmm. is that not all of the commissioners are listed on there. Mm. And I think what we need to do is update that much more frequently than once a year. And the thing is that people do look at it, Mm -hmm. and I did, and I had a... um, Freedom of information request <laughs> to uh, our. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was just a request. Sure. And the thing is, I wanted to have a hard copy of the current master plan. Mm-hmm. The master plan has flaws in it, mm-hmm. and that's where I stand on it because it was not developed with the cooperation and. Uh, in uh, involvement Mm -hmm. of all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. There's statements in there that stakeholders have wished for this and this Mm -hmm. and that, but all the stakeholders were operations at the airport itself. Mm -hmm. The residents had no Mm -hmm. input. So hopefully uh, we can reverse some of this expansion, but I will... Look forward to having you on again. I mean, that's not a not an issue because I think this this is going to be a special. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be my standard show, right. and I have that every two weeks. So I'm waiting for the selectmen's meeting. That's where mm-hmm. I get most of my stories. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're uh, in. Uh, so I, I was just saying, like I, I was, I was like, I hope I'm not going to have a gotcha moment. I hope I'm going to have a ah gotcha. Moment. Well, I even told you in my uh, my email that I'm not. I don't bite. I know. I know. <laughs> but I was I was having uh, comments from some of your colleagues <laughs> that uh, you know just be careful, don't hurt them too much. <laughs> oh, there. I have great colleagues. <laughs> but this is this is an opportunity for mm-hmm. the Beverly Airport Commission mm-hmm. to step up and discuss yeah. maybe in at length instead of the three minutes that the uh that kyle gives me <laughs> and he shuts me <laughs> off that's that's another issue well you know every, we're trying to trying to make sure everybody has a chance to to yeah. get their two cents in so, but then um, yeah but then on on some <laughs> subjects you spend so much time that it's so boring i ran out of film <laughs> this time did you? I did. Wow, wow. So, that was a banner, uh, a record uh, production was a, there. It was a record show. Yeah, but yeah. what I want to do is I want to thank you very much for coming out and exposing yourself. Yes. Because it, I think we expressed both of our views, yeah. and I, I don't want to be uh, the... Uh, master of ceremonies, I want to make sure that we can express our views, and I want to thank you for that. And I just want to give you an opportunity as a closing comment. What do you think? Does this show do anything for us? I think it does. I feel good about it, you know, and it, it's a, an act of good faith on your part to say, let's work together. It's always been that way. Well, the problem is that nobody listened. And guess what? I'm here, and I'm here to work with you. Well, thank you very much. Uh And uh, we have one more minute. But I want to do is uh, we'll schedule another one sometimes, but maybe an alternate instead of you. Oh, yeah. Because I want to get to know all of you guys, or I want our audience to know who you are and what what you've done in the past, Mm. because this was very interesting reading your uh, write-up about the resume and what have you done in your past Mm -hmm. and you have done done an awful lot in regard to uh, shows and uh, dramatic is it dramatic a little comedy too comedy there you go (laughs) so uh, we're all in the same boat so good night Danvers thank you very much for uh, being here and We'll see you in September. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay.